As a virtual assistant, one of the many tasks that your client might ask you to handle is email management. As what its name suggests, it is managing your client's email. Sounds easy, right? But it's actually difficult to implement. Today, let us start to learn about the proper email management. For many people these days, email is equivalent to income especially for those who are in the freelancing industry. Email is usually where the job application happens, the closing of deals realizes, where the inquiries come, and where opportunities pop up. The problem is that there are so many people with cluttered emails. Sure, you might think there is no problem at this at all, but the truth is you might miss out on a lot of opportunities because they have camouflage in other irrelevant email messages. That is why email management is a must, especially if you're a virtual assistant. Take note, if you have super cluttered email, it might need a few hours to finally tame it. The good news is that it is doable. Do it. Let us start with the most basic task. Reading, deleting, and unsubscribing. The first thing you need to do is to decide which email messages you still want to receive and which email messages you want to appear no more in your inbox. Knowingly, we could have subscribed to something that we do not really want to subscribe. For example, you're buying something online and you unknowingly tick on the subscribe button. But the truth is, you do not really plan to subscribe at all. So what you need to do is to find all those messages that you no longer want to receive and click the unsubscribe button. Wait, I'm not telling you to unsubscribe from my YouTube video. I'm telling you to unsubscribe from those unwanted emails. And please, if you have time, click on the subscribe button on my YouTube channel. Thank you. Let us take a look at one of my emails as an example. As you can see, I have unread messages from Uber Eats, WordPress, and from myself as well. So basically, I use Uber Eats application for food delivery. However, I don't really read their promotions or their messages since I can just go to the application to see what is going on there. So what I'm going to do is to click on this message and look for the unsubscribe button. Apparently, I cannot look or I cannot see any unsubscribe button here. So if it's not down here, maybe it's up. And it's true that you can see the unsubscribe option here. Click this one. Are you sure you'd like to stop receiving similar messages from Uber Eats? Unsubscribe. And that's it. From now on, I'm not going to receive any message from Uber Eats. Now, as you can see, I have a lot of unread messages from WordPress. Let's say that there are other messages from WordPress in the other pages of my email. So what I'm going to do is to search here, WordPress, click on search, and now it's going to show all the messages from WordPress. So in order to delete them in bulk, I'm going to take all of them and I'm going to check whether there are some messages that I would love to stay in my inbox, but apparently from this one, I don't have anything. So since I've already ticked everything, I'm going to delete all of them at once by clicking this delete button. Delete. And that's it. Now, some of you guys might have a long list of unread email messages. Well, you do not have really a choice but to read delete and unsubscribe and repeat the process. I know it might take some time, but if you really want to tame your uncontrollable email, then you have to spend some time reading and deleting messages so that in the future, it's gonna be so easy for you to manage your email. So now that you've already read, deleted, and unsubscribed from those unwanted messages, now let us go to the next step, which is Emptying the trash. So once you've already deleted all the unnecessary and no longer important emails, they will automatically go to your trash folder. That means that they don't really immediately vanish from your email space. They just go to another folder called the trash. So what you have to do is to empty your trash folder from time to time, especially if you don't really want those emails anymore. They're just going to take some space in your email and keep your email and your mind cluttered. So for those who do not know how to empty their trash, this is for you. So now let's say I'm done with the primary thing and I want to check my social tabs. 
So as you can see, I have a lot of notification or messages from YouTube, which I no longer actually want. So I will delete them by searching here, YouTube. There you go. I can see all of these notifications. So I'm going to click all of them or to tick all of them. And now I am going to delete all of them at once. Click on delete. And now we have, when we go to our um, trash folder, which you can find here. Now, if you click on the trash folder, you can see that all those email messages that we've just deleted from our social tabs just transferred here in our trash folder. So what I'm going to do is empty the trash now since I am very sure, 100% sure that I no longer want all these emails. And click on OK. So now we don't have anything on our trash folder. You might think that trash is not so important since it doesn't actually make sense to keep a copy of those email messages that you no longer want. However, this is going to be so helpful if you've accidentally deleted a message that you don't really want to delete. So let's say, for example, I deleted this message, Arigo Processing. I'm going to delete it. However, I didn't really intend to delete that. So it was an accident. So what I'm going to do is go to the trash folder, click on this message, and then click on the move to folder or move to button, click on it, and then select which folder you want it to appear. So for me, I want this message to appear on my inbox again. So now you don't have any trash as of the moment. And when you go to inbox, you can see the email message that we've just transferred from our trash folder to our inbox folder. And I'm going to mark it as in read. So there you go. Now that we've already discussed the first step and the second step, we are now going to our third step, which is getting to know category labels and colors. So before we proceed to the tutorial, let us first discuss what is category and what is label and how the two are different from one another. So basically category is the automated attempt of Google to separate or segregate your incoming email messages. On the other hand, labels are controlled by the owner of the email. So let us go to our email to visualize what we are talking about. So now we are currently in our email. So as you can see, we have three tabs here. We have the primary, the social, and the promotions. So primary is your main inbox. This is where your important messages come in. On the other hand, social are updates from any social media platforms. So for example, you can see LinkedIn here, YouTube. And if you link your Facebook account in this email, you will also see Facebook here or Twitter or Instagram or any other social media platform emails. On the other hand, promotions by just the name itself are promotions from different companies. So as you can see, I have a lot of promotions here. The truth is I don't open social tab and promotions tab that much. However, I have to change and I actually need to clean up these tabs, right? So for promotions, they're actually very helpful, especially when you want to find a very great deal from the companies that you've subscribed to. So from time to time, I usually scroll through here and look whether they have a great deal or not. But if you are not interested in anything, then you can just instantly delete all of them. So for now here, on this under the social tab, I'm going to delete all of them. So now we already know what these three main tabs are. They are categories. Now let us find where are the labels. The labels can be seen here in the more section. So as you can see, we only have one label for now, which is vidIQ. However, I'm going to create a new label and I'm going to call it Romy. Click on create and then now find over here your created folder. There you go, Romy. So there's nothing yet since I didn't add anything. 
So let's say I'm going to categorize all the emails that are sent from me. So I'm going to click on Mendoza, Romilin Carillo. Well, the, my email address is going to be my email address is going to be blurred. There you go, Mendoza Robin Carillo. And I'm going to tick all of them. And then I'm going to click on these three dots, a button, more. And then choose filter messages like this from Mendoza Robin Carillo. Uh, two, if you want to be very specific with what email you actually want to control, but for me, I don't have any specific in mind. I just want to categorize or label all the important emails that are coming from my own self. So I'm going to create, click on create filter here. And then now I don't want them to appear on my inbox. So I'm going to tick on the skip the inbox or archive it. I'm going to say that I want to apply my label, which is Romy. And also apply to 51 matching conversations. So this is very helpful since you don't have to click or tick one by one. You can already um, handle the email messages at once with this tool. So now you can click on the create filter. Now there you go. If we go back to our inbox, you cannot see any Mendoza Romilin right now. However, we can find those courses from the Romy tab or Romy la label. There you go. So I still have a copy of it, but it's no longer distracting or taking away my focus when I'm on my inbox. So now that we've already discussed about categories and labels, we are now going to move forward to colors. Just like in manual planning, note taking and file organizing, some people like to be very visual. That means that they like to apply visually appealing characters, icons, or colors in order to make their presentation or their management more effective. While some people can function very well without any colors or any design, some people, on the other hand, are more effective when they apply colors and designs into their file management system. So for those who are fans of applying colors into their file management system, there is a good news to all of you. You can color your labels, so then it will be easier for you to see which one is a high priority and which one can be done later or can be read or replied to later on. Let's see an example. So now let's say that your inbox looks like this. So as you can see, I have a lot of email messages from myself. So these are actually important messages or files that I need to process something here. So now they are labeled as Romy. So let's go to the label Romy. There you go. And for you to apply color on it, all you need to do is to click on this label. And now you can see these three vertical dots. Click on this one. And then the first thing that you can see is label color. And let's say I want to put it... Um, I want to apply blue color. So now all the Romy messages will have a blue label. So let's go back to inbox. And there you go. You can see Romy, 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 Romy in blue messages. So now let's say this Uber Eats right here is actually a task from your client. Let's say that your client is Uber Eats. So this is not a promotion. This is actually a task. So what I'm going to do is, okay, filter this message first, like what we did before. I'm going to um, add a label on this one. Um, I'm going to apply the label, new label, client, Uber Eats. There you go. Apply to two filter matching conversation and create filter. So there you go. Now we have now the label client Uber Eats. Now, I want them because they are high priority. I'm going to click on here once again and then click on label color and I'm gonna choose red color. And when I go back to inbox, there you go. You can see client Uber Eats. Then whenever I open my email, I can immediately see the red color as it is very appealing to the eyes. Then I can easily 
check on it or read this and reply on it because I know that this is very important. So that is how you actually use the colors for your emails. So you don't actually need to apply colors to each and every single message that you receive. Only apply to those that are important. Like for example, your clients, you can apply labels and colors into it so that it is going to be easier for you to see, to read, to check, to reply to their messages. After all, client is equivalent to income. And don't do this solely for money. You have to do this in order to build your reputation as a highly reputable and highly responsible virtual assistant. So now we are done with reading, deleting, and unsubscribing, emptying your trash, category, labeling, and colors. Now what's next? Have you ever experienced receiving a lot of emails and then you have to reply the same thing to almost every sender? Do you really want to type it again and again, again and again, again and again, and again and again? Just because you receive 1,000 emails doesn't mean that you need to type your reply 1,000 times as well. Well, it's true that you can use copy-paste. However, don't you know that there is a more effective and more efficient way to reply to all those senders? And that is by creating a template to reply. Yes, you can create a template and you can choose to reply with this template whenever you needed to. Let me show you how to do that. So now we are going to see how to enable and how to create templates on your Gmail account. So this is gonna be so helpful, especially if you have to type or to reply to different people the same thing. So the first step is to click on the settings button here, then click see all settings. And then next, you can see here the different tabs. We have general, labels, inbox, accounts and imports, filters and block addresses, forwarding and POP, EMAP, add-ons, chat and meet, advanced, offline, themes. So you have to click on advanced and then find templates. So this one. So as you can see, mine is still disabled. So what we have to do is to tick the enable option here. And then don't forget to scroll down and click on save changes. There you go. And now it's done. <laughs> no, yeah, it's true that we've already enabled this one, but we still don't have our own template. So to create a template, what you need to do is to click on compose. And here it is. So on this new message, you're not really going to create a message for a certain receiver. So what you need to do is to create a template message that is more often than not you are going to use to send to your receivers. So I'm going to create a template for those who have passed the quality check for their assignments, another template for those who have um, lacking requirements for their assignment, and another template for those who require a, just a little bit more improvement. So let's see how we do it. So here on the subject line, I am going to type the subject that I want for my email, which is we've received your assignment. There you go. Then we can use it. I'm not going to um, input week one, week two or week three because I want to use this template for week one assignment, week two assignment, week three assignment and so on. So now, hello classmates. Well, this is just a temporary template, so don't think this is what you're going to receive when we start checking your assignments. So, hello classmates, we've received your assignment for week, insert week number here. After going through it carefully, we are happy to announce that you've passed the quality check. Keep learning, oops. Keep learning, there you go. Regards, Romy, let's see. And then now, for example, this is the template that you actually want. So let's click on this three dots button here, more options button, and then select templates and the next is select save draft as template and then select or click save as new template oops 
And then now you can change the name of your template. We've received your assignment. I'm going to rename this one, assignment passed. Because this template is for those classmates who have passed the quality check of the assignment. So I want to have assignment passed, assignment lack of requirements, and assignment needs improvement. So click on save, and that's it. Now, let's create another um, template. So for example, still like this, but um, they lack requirements. So I'm just going to edit this a bit. We've found out that you lack the following requirements to complete your assignment. Oopsie, your assignment. So that's it. Um, nope. I'm going to do this and add a bullet form. Requirements number one, requirements number two. Please, um, sorry. Now, for example, this is the template that I want to send for those um, students or classmates who have lacking requirements. So now I'm going to save it again. Click again, more options, select templates, select save draft as template and save as new template. So now I'm going to rename it assignment lack of requirements. There you go. So for example, Google is our classmate and I click it here and then I've seen that Google completed all the requirements. So what I'm going to do is reply. So click on reply and then click on the more options button, click on templates. And then let's say Google has passed the quality check. So all you need to do is like that. And then I'm just going to change the week number here. For example, we, so for example, we are now on week four. I'm going to change four and then now it's ready to be sent. So for example, you are not replying, you are composing the email and you want to send it to um, one of your students or one of your contacts. So what you need to do is click on compose. So for example, you're sending to example at example.com and you want to use a template. So you click here on more options, select template. And then now you have to select which template you want to send to example. So for example, this example at example.com submitted his week four assignment, but it's not complete. So we're going to choose assignment lack of requirements. There you go. And then I'm going to um, change this one. So for example, he didn't submit his resume and his application letter. I'm just going to change it and then here, change a bit of week four and that's it. So as you can see guys, it's very helpful to have a template as you do not need to type it all over again or even use copy paste. All you need to do is to select the template that contains the message that you want to send to your receiver. So now you already have a template that you can use to reply the same message to different people. Now you can say goodbye to typing it all over again or the copy paste action. So now let's talk about a certain scenario. So what if you're going on a vacation for a certain period of time? Let's say you're going to Japan for three days or a week, and that means you cannot attend to work-related emails immediately or even personal emails. Well, it's true, you can just leave it out there and reply once you come back. However, it is smarter for you to have an autoresponder. So what is an autoresponder? So this is a feature of Gmail that lets you reply immediately lead to the email messages that you receive while you are out of work or away from work. So for example, you're going to Japan for three days, then you want to set an autoresponder for three days that will reply to every um, people who send you a message to inform them that you are out of work or like out of town and that you're coming back in three days. So how to do that? Let's watch this tutorial. So now we are currently on my personal email account or email address and I'm going to set an autoresponder or vacation responder on this one because later on we want to try um, whether it works or not. So to create an autoresponder what you need to do is to click on the settings button 
click on see all settings and then among these tabs you have to make sure that you are under the general tab then scroll down and look for vacation responder there you go so as you can see my vacation responder is currently off and now let's say that i'm going to japan for three days so i want to turn on my vacation responder so as you can see Vacation Responder sends an automated reply to incoming messages. If a contact sends you several messages, this automated reply will be sent at most once every four days. So there you go. I'm going to turn it on, tick on the Vacation Responder on. And then here on the first day, you can actually set when it will start sending um, Vacation Responder or Auto Responder. So let's say I'm going today, 16. And I'm, this one, you can actually untick or tick this one. Untick if you untick means like unselected if you want to manually turn it off or you can if you want to like automatically stop sending um, the vacation responder then you can choose or select or tick last day and then indicate the date when you want this to automatically stop so for example for in my case I'm going to Japan for three days so I'll be back on the 20th so I want to keep on sending automated response until February 19. There you go. Let's say my subject line is thank you for your message. I'll get back to you soon. And under the message section, this is where you type the message that you want to send to the people who will be sending you messages while you're away. So let's say that I want to Put this one. Hello there, this is Romy. I'm currently on a vacation. I'll be back on the 20th of February 2021 and I'll be sure to attend your concern as well. Talk to you on February 2021. And then you also have the option to only send a response to people in your contacts. But for me, I don't want this. I want to send an autoresponder to everyone. So click on save changes. Um, and that's it. So now let us try to log in to a different email address and then let us try to send a message to this email address. Then let's see whether it really works or not. So I'm going to change from here. I'm going to use the skillmates. There you go. So now let's try to compose a message and I'm going to delete all of this. So for example, I'm going to send my personal email address. There you go. Subject is high test. And message is this is a test. Auto responder. And click on send. Now it's already sent. We just have to wait for a few seconds or minute for us to receive the reply of the vacation responder. Let's refresh try. And there you go. My personal email address already sent a reply without me typing anything. Let's click this one. And there you go. Uh, from my personal email address, I received this message. Hello there, this is Romy. I'm currently on a vacation. I'll be back on the 28th of February 2021. I'll be sure to attend your concern asset. Talk to you on February 2021. And perfection! Now we have successfully created our own autoresponder. So now you can completely enjoy your vacation without thinking about your emails. So now you already know how to properly manage your email. Now the question, how are you going to manage your client's email? I mean, it is true that you can use and apply this newly acquired knowledge on email management to your client's email as well. However, the question is that how are you going to get access to his or her email? Are you going to ask your client for his or her email password? Hmm, maybe it's not the best idea. You know, an email address access is very, very important because email is where almost all of our important messages come true or our important settings come true. So if I were your client, I'm probably not going to give my password. But there are a few clients out there who would trust their VA or virtual assistant 100% percent so they won't have problems giving you access or giving you their password however most of the clients would probably never ever give their email password which is understandable but do you know that you can actually access their emails even without 
having to ask for their password? Yes, that is what we call email delegation and it is very easy to set up. So if you have a client who have already hired a virtual assistant back then, more or less they already know how to delegate email. However, if not yet, then you can recommend this strategy so that you can have an access to his or her emails. Then you can start reading, replying and deleting messages without needing the password. So this is how we do it. So now, for example, this is your client's email. So for him or her to give you access to their email address or to their emails without giving you their password, all they need to do is to click the settings button. There you go. Click see all settings. There you go. And then go under these tabs. You have to choose accounts and import. So under the accounts and import, you have to check here, scroll down, scroll down, and there you go. Grant access to your account. So this allow others to read and send mail on your behalf. So for example, I am your client. So I am the skill mates. Let's say um, Romy is my virtual assistant. So for example, I am the owner of the skill mates and my name is Anna. So Anna, I hired Romy to be my virtual assistant. However, I don't want to give her my password, so I'm going to delegate her instead. So here you have the option, mark as read. So mark conversations as read when opened by others. So for example, the virtual assistant um, already read that message. So then on your email, it will be marked as read. But you can also choose this one, leave conversation and read when keep opened by others. So for example, Romy, the virtual assistant, opened the email messages of Anna, which is the client. On Anna's end, she will still see the messages um, that she didn't read yet. So she will still see them as unread. So on my part, as a client or as a virtual assistant, I still prefer to leave conversation and read when opened by others. But it is all up to you or up to your client, okay? So sender information. So show this address and the person who sent it, sent by. So for example, um, Anna delegate Romy and then Romy's email account is romyva at gmail.com. So whenever Romy replies to the um, sender or to the person, the person will see that the email uh, came from romyva at gmail.com and the skillmates ph at gmail.com. Or you also have this kind of option, show this address only. So the skillsmates at gmail.com. So even when Romy was the one who replied to the person, her email address will not show, which for me, I think I prefer this one, but it's all up to you, okay? So now you have to click on add another account to delegate. And let's say I'm going to delegate, um, okay, my personal email Gmail account. Next step. And the next send email to grant access. A confirmation request has been sent to blah, 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 blah at gmail.com. And that's it. <laughs> so now let us um, open an incognito window and log in to that delegated email, which is my personal email, okay? So I'm going to log in here just to see the message that we've received. So for example, now you are the you are now the VA, okay? You are now Romy the VA, the virtual assistant. So right here you will receive this message, Gmail team, the skills mates has granted you access to their Gmail account accept or deny. So to accept this request, please click the link below and to reject this request, please click the link below. Of course, we're going to accept the request since we are the virtual assistant of the skillmates, right? So please confirm viewing and sending messages on behalf of the skillmates at gmail.com. Confirm and there you go. So how do we actually access that email, the email of um, the skillmates? If you go here, you might ask like, hey, I'm, I, I still can't find the emails of the skillmates. It, they are not appearing on my inbox. So what you need to do is click here on your profile photo or default photo for your Gmail account. And then down below you have here, down your profile you have the skillmates 
ph.gmail.com delegated. That means that you have access to this email. So let's click that one. And now, here you go. You can already access the client's emails. So for example, this one, um, yeah, Romy Carillo, try another test. So for example, this one I'm going to, I can already reply, blah, 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 hello. Let's say for example, I'm going to send to um, pentalk at gmail.com. I'm going to reply like, this is Romy from the Skillmate using the Skill. This is Romy using the Skillmates account as a delegate. Test, test. So now let's try to send. Delegate, test, send, and now. So that that was Romy Mendoza Romy, the virtual assistant, trying to send from this account. So I'm going to sign out and check log in from. Um, sorry, log in on Pentalk. Pentalk is mine, but yeah. So now we're logging in, and you can see here the skillmates delegate text the skillmates ph at gmail.com this is Romy using the skillmates account as a delegate test that so as you can see i've successfully managed to send an email as a delegate so i actually used my personal email address in sending this one but it appears here that the skillmates ph has sent this message so that's it congratulations you are now a successful gmail delegate so now you can already have access to your client's email without asking for his or her password. And now you already have the required knowledge for you to manage emails properly. So now that means that you are ready to go to become a certified, verified, and skilled virtual assistant. Good luck on your freelancing slash virtual assistant career and hopefully you've learned a lot on this lesson. Please comment down below whether you've liked this lesson or not and whether there are other email management tools that you want to share to all of us. I would be happy to learn from you guys and bye! See you in our next videos!